Hey there. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. I hope you're doing well. It's late where I am, and I can't sleep. And so I thought, hey, why not pull out a simple little game, a simple little phone, and just sit down and have a go. Maybe this will be a good way to end the day, and if you're in the middle of yours, a good way to carry you through it. Uh, Today we're going to be playing a wonderful little dice game called That's Pretty Clever. It's designed by Wolfgang Varsh and published by Stronghold Games. So, what is That's Pretty Clever? If you're unfamiliar with games like Yahtzee, it's a roll and write. Every turn, over the course of six turns, six rounds basically, I'm going to be taking these dice, rolling them, hopefully keeping them in the dice tray, which, by the way, doesn't come with the game, Uh, but if you can find yourself one that is similarly lint and dog hair riddled, uh, I would recommend it. It really enhances the experience. Uh, really kind of gives the whole game a very homespun feeling. Anyway, every round I'm going to be rolling these dice, and I'm going to be making some decisions. How am I going to make these decisions? Well, as you might have surmised by looking at the colors of this game sheet and the colors of these dice, each die corresponds to an area. So the orange for the orange area, purple for purple, so on and so forth. Each of these areas have their own rules for how to place the number that is rolled on them. For instance, the orange die, you can put any dang old number in there. You would ideally like it to be as high as possible because at the end of the game, you're going to be summing up those totals and bigger number means bigger point, bigger point means higher score, higher score means a better sense of purpose. I won't dive any further into the existential motivation for any of that, lest we get a little too real. Uh, The green die, if you can see, has a greater than or equal to sign over the course of this. So the first die you place has to be greater than or equal to one. That's gonna be pretty easy. Then greater than or equal to two, less easy, so on and so forth until it resets at greater than or equal to five. The yellow die just has to match the value. Doesn't matter at all. As long as it matches the value, you bubble it in and boom, Bob's your uncle. The section that gives a lot of people trouble is this blue and white section here. And what this means is that no matter whether you take the blue or the white die, which I'll explain the white die in a second here, those two are always added together. And it doesn't matter where they are. So, for instance, if you take the blue die and the white die ends up somewhere else, which I'll, again, I'll explain in a minute, it's still going to be added together in the same way. So, currently, blue is one, white is three, it would be four. If I flipped this to a five, it'd be five and three, it's eight, and so on and so forth. Now, as you fill in these boxes, you're going to complete rows, which are going to get you extra bonuses. These little X's mean you bubble in a spot on that relevant track. So I would bubble in any yellow box here. I would bubble in the next green box. I would put the number six in purple here, so on and so forth. All of them are fairly self-explanatory. A lot of them on the yellow track just add up to additional points. Uh, And then there are these little foxes. The little foxes just add additional points at the end of the game, and the additional points that it adds to your score is your lowest scoring area. So if I bubble in everything in yellow, that's great for me, but this fox isn't going to be worth diddly squat if I didn't do anything in orange. So the game kind of pushes you to expand a bit. Now, all of that, I hope, if my explanation has done the game any justice, should be pretty straightforward. Where the game gets a little tricky is every time you select a die, any die that is of a lower value gets put on this silver platter. Now in the multiplayer game, your opponents would get to choose one of those die to use for themselves. In the solo game, it's just a die that you're not going to have access to. So for instance, if I rolled these dice and they ended up like this, and I went with a blue five for my first pick, everything else would get swept up and put on the silver platter. And that would be the only die that I placed that round. So probably not what we want to do. So you got to be a little tricky about how you select these die. I would probably want to start with a green one because then I lose nothing and I get to fill in this first little green box. 
Uh, something I didn't mention necessarily is that all of these sections here have to be filled in left to right. Uh, and purple's rule is that each number has to be greater than the last until you put in a six, at which point you can just restart the cycle again. So at the risk of explaining anything further, I'm just going to start playing. Um, there's some additional tricks that I'll cover as we go, such as free rerolls or uh, an additional uh, kind of plus one here, which just lets you use the same die again. I'll cover it all as we play. It's pretty simple. Um, and so, yeah, without further ado, I'm just going to start rolling dice, and I'm going to try to score just so many points. Hey, gamers, it's Dan coming at you from the edit zone. Uh, now, I... <laughs> I really can't believe this, uh, but wouldn't you believe it? I played the whole game wrong. Uh, this is a lesson that before you play a game at 3 o'clock in the morning to put on your YouTube channel, maybe take a quick flip through the rule book and just refresh yourself on rules that you may have forgotten. Uh, <laughs> every time you pick a die, you're supposed to pick up the remaining die and roll them to get a new collection of dies dice to choose from. Now, this is as helpful as it is hurtful because it limits your options, but also gives you more options. So you can't, you know, bank on having one die later, but you also don't get stuck with bad combinations like I do over and over and over in this video. So rather than re-record an entire gameplay, I'm just going to let it be what it is. It's fine. It's a little solo dice experience. And honestly, my score was comparable to what it's been in the past. So I don't think it gave me any giant advantage, but it's very important that you understand that I am playing the game just a bit completely wrong. Uh, and you know, I'm just going to let that be a lesson. Uh, if you're playing, that's pretty clever on your own. Make sure that every time you select a die, you re-roll the remaining dice. And that gives you a lot more utility with that re-roll function. Anyway, that's Dan from the edit zone, from the teach zone, and from the embarrassment zone. I'm out of here. I'll see you next time, hopefully getting rules a lot more correct. I love you very much. Enjoy the rest of the video. Bye-bye. I don't know how good I am at this. I've played it a few times. I don't think my score has ever been particularly phenomenal. So feel free to backseat me in the comments about what you would have done differently. All right, let's get started. So for round one, what do we have? All right. So right away, we have some dice that we know that we're not choosing. We're not choosing a six orange or a six white to start this out. Uh, by the way, I think I skipped this in the teach. The white die is wild. It can be any color you want. Um, but if you take it for blue, you still have to add the blue value to it. There is no getting around that. Don't even try. Um, so given that, I think I'm going to start actually by taking the blue one. Since I'm adding it to the six anyway, it's a higher number. It's, you know, not uh, on the craziest spectrum, so it's not the most rare, uh, but it's a die that keeps me, my options very much open. So I would cross this out, and that's it. Now I go on and I choose the next die. If I had chosen something like the three, the one would have been put on the silver platter, but I didn't because I'm a god gamer, uh, and my gameplay is truly elite. Uh, feel free to check out my no-scope compilations in the description below. Um, what next? Yellow 3 isn't bad. Uh, you know, it's as good as anything. And it doesn't get rid of any additional die. So we'll just do that. And then, now I can kind of take whatever I want. And so I think I'll probably take an orange 6. Um, that just makes sense to me. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take an orange 6 and bubble it in here. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the game, the orange can be any number, but you'd prefer it to be higher because at the end of the game, they're just going to be added up. And remember, more points means more better. And more better means we feel more better about ourselves. Now, what I've just done is circled this little reroll uh, symbol. Essentially, what that means is over the course of the rest of the game, I can choose to reroll all of the dice that I just rolled at any point. This can be useful if you end up with some truly unfortunate dice rolls, uh, but for now, we're doing just fine. Now, usually at the end of this round, I would have these dice here, 
and these three would go on the silver platter for my opponents to each choose one of. Uh, they could choose the same ones if they wanted, but, you know, that's their business. I'm not really particularly interested in that because they're not me, and that's just not as interesting. In the solo game, however, what you do is you roll all the dice, you find the three lowest values, which it looks like is these three, and you get to choose one of them. And this is to simulate being the passive player, where I get to use one of these rolls to do something good for me. Um, so what do we like? Yellow 2 is boring, but fine. Works towards finishing this row. Uh, 6 and 2 make an 8, which is finishing close towards finishing this row here. I think I'm going to do that. The blue section can end up being a little bit of a headache because you really need two dice to be rolled in the right way. So I think I'm just going to get that out of the way as much as possible early. So now we'll move into the second round. Let me go ahead and cross this off here. And now I get to circle this little plus one. And now the plus one simply means that any die that I roll this round, I can choose to use again multiple times. So for instance, if I really liked this orange four, I could cross off this plus one and have two orange fours there. Uh, am I going to do that? I don't think so. Uh, but what I think I am going to do is probably take this yellow one. Seems fine. Um, yeah, I'll cross off this one here. And you know, I'm actually going to switch. I thought I was going to use this fancy pen, but the game comes with these delightful markers that really do block out the spaces in a much more cohesive way, don't you think? Now, notably, if I take this two for blue, it's going to be eight. I can't do anything with that. I could take the white six, but then I don't get a third die pick, which is less than ideal. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is just take the green three, because I don't care if I lose the blue two. It's not doing anything for me anyway, so it can get the heck out of there. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and cross off this first thing. Just get it started. It is greater than or equal to one, so it's perfectly valid, just like my feelings about my poor score that is almost certainly imminent. Then I probably will take a six, a wild six. Uh, where am I going to use it, though, is the question. Orange makes a lot of sense because it's just big number go up. Uh, you could make an argument for yellow here, and I think I am going to do that because... This gets this row almost entirely full. If I get a five next round, I get a free blue mark off, which will let me get rid of the two or the 12, uh, just those pesky ones that are, are gonna be really hard to, to get a hold of. So now that we've done our turn, let's go ahead and do the passive player turn. Looks like one, one, and three. We certainly don't want an orange one. We certainly don't want a green one, because it's not valid anymore, unforch. Uh, and <laughs> ironically, the blue three uh, matches with a five to be an eight. So all of these are kind of butts. They're actually all terrible. I mean, I guess I'm just taking an orange one. I mean, that's my only legal choice. And I think you have to. I don't, I don't remember. After a brief check of the rule book, it's a little unclear. It says passive players may take a die. Um, but to err on the side of caution, I'm just going to drink my medicine and take an orange one. You hate to see it, but you know, such is life. We move on. We keep on rolling. And we're in round three now. This game really swings along. So let's go ahead and roll. All right. An interesting-ish spread. Uh, I think I'm going to take to start the white one, which adds to this blue four here to give me a five. Uh, if I fill in the six, I get a free yellow bubble in, which I'd probably use to bubble in that five there. Um, yeah, from there, I'm gonna take a yellow two, cross off this yellow two. If I get a four, I get a free green bubble in, which is nice. Uh, and then I think I'm just gonna take a purple six. Uh, I don't know why I put it there. I'm gonna take a purple six. And it just means that I can start over uh, counting up here. And it's, again, just added up at the end of the game. So that seems good to me. That seems good and fine. All right, let's go ahead and roll for the passive player. Looks like 
a little two, three, four action. There is a tie. What's the rule for the tie? All right, so I guess what I'm doing is taking these and placing them here. The rulebook says closer to the silver platter. I assume they mean in physical proximity. Again, feel free to correct me down in the comments if that is brutally wrong. So I have a three and a four, which makes seven on the blue. So that's nothing. Uh, a white three and a green two. Uh, I guess I'll just take the green two. It's fine. Um, ooh, potentially, hmm. No, I think I'm going to take the three for the yellow, which this is almost done now. If we get a one, that's 14 points, baby. Uh, all right, now we're moving into round four. And in round four, you get a free uh, X anywhere that you could cross off a space or a free six in any of these spaces. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to... Uh, ooh, this is kind of tough, actually. No, I think this is all right. I'm going to use my free X cross this off here, which is going to give me a free yellow cross off. I'm going to use the free yellow cross off to cross off this five, which gives me a free blue cross off. I'm going to use the blue cross off to cross off either two or 12. And I think I'm going to do two just because I feel extra smart. Uh, and I feel like I'm going to roll big and high and what could ever go wrong. So I have that now. We'll go ahead and roll the dice. The game flies by, and I'm uncomfortable at how few boxes I've filled in. Uh, okay. So the blue and white die, as per usual, are not cooperating with me even slightly. Uh, the six just does nothing for me. I might use a reroll here. Let me see if there's anything else particularly inspired. There really isn't, and you're not taking these rerolls with you, so you may as well use them. I'm going to reroll all the dice. Okay. <laughs> Again, the blue and the... Uh, white die. Absolutely hate my guts, but uh, we carry on. Let's see. What do we want to do here? I could take a white two for purple down here if I wanted to, potentially. There's also just a purple two. Um, but I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to continue my, my heavy pull into yellow here which is probably going to be my downfall. This is always my problem with this game. I hyperfixate, and then I don't uh, spread out enough, which uh, makes my foxes count for nothing. But also, you don't get foxes unless you hyperfixate. So uh, the game really is uh, playing a cruel trick. Uh, because I took a two, I got to put this one on the silver platter. What am I going to choose now? Let me go ahead and pull these into frame a little bit better there. I think now... Uh, I'm going to take a yellow four. Ugh. If I take the yellow four, I get rid of the other two. So no, I guess I'm going to take a purple two and put that there. Uh, again, because this is a six, it resets. That's the rule with this row, so you can keep on going. So that is a valid pick. Uh, and then I'm going to take the yellow four at the end there to do this, which crosses off a free yellow, uh, excuse me, a free green, which I'll go ahead and take advantage of there. Not the most inspired green cross off, but hey, what can you do? Uh, all right. Is there any die that I want to reuse? Yeah, sure. I'm going to reuse this yellow four to get this. Uh, and then I also have scored this as well. So we're humming right along. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do the passive players roll real quick. Oh, the dice have exploded. Okay. Uh, holy hell. That is a lot of similar numbers. Um, okay. So it's going to be... You'll have to bear with me here. The interpretation is uh, <laughs> closer to the silver platter. So this breaks the two tie. And this breaks the one tie. And then... I guess I will put in this three. I, I don't really know. That rule's a little weird. Uh, but, you know, you make certain sacrifices when you play games all by your lonesome at three in the morning. Uh, cool. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and use this green three, I think. I think that's just the best thing for me to do. Yeah, seems all right. We'll go ahead and do that. All right, now we're into round five. The penultimate round. I don't think I'm doing very well. 
Hard to say. Potentially very easy to say. But I think I'm going to say that it's hard to say, so I sound more nuanced. Uh, again, the blue and the white dye have not cooperated with me, even slightly a little bit, uh, which, frankly, I'm beginning to take personal offense to. Uh, but we carry on. I think I'm just going to re-roll. I don't think any of these die results, apart from the yellow five, are particularly good for me. So let's just go ahead and get our free re-roll on. All right. Hey, looks like the blue and the white did cooperate with me, which is grand. I think it makes the most sense to take the yellow one first, so I can cross this off here and get these points down there. Uh, and then taking the blue three works for the nine here, which gets me a free reroll, which I'm not crazy about because there's only one round left anyway, but beggars, choosers, etc. cetera. Uh, and then I could take another purple six. I could take a white six and use it as a yellow or even potentially as a green to give me a, uh, a plus one, another one of those die reuses. Um, <clears throat> those are really helpful, especially late game, to kind of cap off stuff that, that you need. Hmm. Interesting. So if I take the six, it's just six points in a reroll. If I take the white six for green, technically it's a four-point jump, uh, but it does give me a plus one, so it's a little bit less, but potentially more. I think I'm going to do that. I think that's, I think that's what I'm doing. Okay, uh, and then now we will do the passive player roll. Let's see. Hopefully, there's no more crazy tiebreakers. It's all threes. <laughs> it's threes all the way down. I'm just going to grab these three purely on vibes alone. Excuse me while I throw my pen across the room. I'm lashing out. It's your fault frankly. Um, so if I could get an apology in the comments, that would make me feel better. Um, of course, I'm kidding. These dice are bad. They're bad dice. So they should feel bad. Um, green three just doesn't do anything. Let's just get it out of my face. Uh, purple three is incredibly mid, but the yellow three also doesn't do anything. So it looks like it's the purple three for me, which will get me an extra reroll. If only I could use those rerolls for this horrible, horrible other player who isn't me, who is rolling just so abysmally. All right, final round. Let's see. Oh, I definitely changed that die face. It was right there. Hopefully you trust me on that. Although, if I'm cheating in a solo dice game alone in my room, I think I have bigger problems than just cheating. Okay. So, what the heck do we have here? It's not great. The 11 is fine in terms of the blue. The blue and the white add up to 11, but that doesn't really get me a bonus of any sort. Uh, the green 3 does nothing. The purple 2, well, the purple 2 does give me a free... Uh, okay, yeah, I think I am going to stick with this. Although... Functionally, I could... Oh, no, I can't. I can't do a purple two, excuse me, because there's a purple three right there. Um, and that is a problem. So, yeah, I think we're just re-rolling. Forgive me. Oh, and then I have a plus one thing that I need to remember. So let's just re-roll. Hope it goes better for us. It does not... It does not. <laughs> That's just where that sentence ends. It does not go better for us. Uh, woof. This is actually awful. Just terrible. Oh, man. Okay. Um, hmm. I have another reroll. I'm just going to use it. Yeah, that's that's miserable. I, I don't think I've uh, cheated there. I, I think I marked off that last reroll, but if I didn't, uh, you may crucify me. That is totally fine. It was good enough for Jesus, and he was a nice Jewish boy like me, so I, I wouldn't fault you for doing the same. Okay, these are less offensive numbers, and I appreciate that greatly. I'm going to take this white four. Uh, yes, I'm going to take the white four because it adds to ten. I'm going to cross this off here, which gets me a free green space, which crosses off that. Um, 
I don't know if you can hear my dog snoring in the background, but uh, my apologies if you can. They're just sleepy little fellas, and you know what? Truthfully, I envy that about them. They just sleep and sleep, and it sometimes, honestly, feels like they're rubbing it in my gosh dang face. Uh, I'm going to take the yellow five here and cross this off, which gives me a orange four, which gives me another reroll that won't be useful. Uh, because I took a five, this orange four gets the heck out of there. <sighs> what now? Um... I guess I'm just taking a purple six, which I'm going to write here, which gives me a blue cross off. I'm going to cross it off. Let's see. I think I'm going to cross off the three here, and I'll tell you why. Actually, wait. No, that doesn't make any sense. See, I almost made a common rules mistake. What I was thinking was I was going to use the free blue to cross off this three and then reuse the four to fill in this four, but that's not how that works. It would fill in the 10. Uh, so that just doesn't work. But, uh, but, 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 hmm. Maybe this was a mistake, actually. Maybe taking the purple six was a mistake. I wonder if I'm supposed to take the green five, although that doesn't really, it's kind of six of one half dozen the other. Well, no, because it's a different amount of a point swing, isn't it? Uh, no, it's exactly the same. 15 to 21 is six points, if my math has not failed me. Um, so, hmm. Well, I could sit here and think about it all day. I don't think it's going to matter too much. Um, I think what I'm going to do... What am I hoping for? If I... If I cross off the three or the four here, I think I would choose the three. If I get lucky and spike a four on the passive roll, then I get a five, which turns into a 10 on the orange track. Um, but I, all told, I, I've done abysmally this game. This has been, I think, maybe my worst scoring game, which is classic that it's being recorded, but that's just YouTuber lifestyle, don't you think? Um, I have not reached a single fox, which is, is rough. Uh, but what can you do? Ultimately, it is what it is. So, yeah, I think I'm just going to cross off the three and hope to spike a four. Uh, or an 11, I guess. So I'll do that. Um, and then, oh, interestingly, hold on, this is kind of fun. I'm going to reuse this six to put in another six here, which gets me another plus one. And then I'm going to use that plus one to reuse a four, which will fill in here. Let me actually double check. Oh, interesting. Okay, so I misremembered. You can actually choose any of the die. Um, so I think, huh. Because here's the, here's the thinking. If I choose the green five, I would get a free blue bubble in and then I could bubble in. Yeah, yeah, that's what I need to do. So my apologies. It's going to end up being the same. Uh, interestingly, um, I'm going to choose the green five with that plus one. I'm going to cross this off, which crosses off a blue. I'm going to use that blue to cross off an 11, which gives me a purple six, which I'm just going to write here instead of that four, which will give me a yellow cross off, which will cross this off. And then I do get a fox. Look at that. I also get a plus one. Uh, and this is the fun part of the game. This is where the game uh, shines because it makes you feel, surprise, surprise, very clever. I think my score is still going to be pretty bad. Uh, but, you know, what can you do? Um, and I think then if I can choose any die, basically I can choose any die that isn't the green or the purple six, uh, the green five or the purple six, because you can only choose one die to be used, reused each turn. You can't reuse the same die a bunch of times, uh, but you can use multiple of them in a turn. So I could reuse in the orange four, which would be eight points. Um, or I could reuse, that's it really. That's the only, the only interesting thing. And I wonder, 
I wonder if I just wait for the passive player to see if I can if I can spike something better. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. So, last roll of the game. Let's see what gifts the passive player provides us. A three, two, a six, a four, a four, a three, a three. I'm just saying numbers now. Um, okay, so it's going to be a three and a two and a three. I really bungled the uh, ordering of that. But again, the rule book is wild. And so I'm being a little wild myself. So I get to choose any one of these. Uh, unfortunately, the blue die did not cooperate with me, as is the norm. Uh, but... Hmm. I think I'm probably going to end up using my plus one on this five here. Uh, I got punished a little bit for not taking the four, but I think... Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, so I'm going to use my last plus one for this green five, which gets me another little foxy boy. Um, and then for the passive die, I think I'm roped into taking the uh, orange two. I think that's all I can do. Yep. Which turns into a four. And that's freaking it. That's the whole game. We're done. Uh, now, all that I get to do is tally up my score and see <laughs> just how brutally the rulebook wants to dumpster me in terms of how it feels I did. Um, on the back of the rulebook, there's a little guide that'll tell you, uh, I'm not sure how in focus that is, uh, but it'll tell you, oh, you're so clever. Are you Einstein? What a genius. Impressive. Hats off to you. Great result. Uh, it's 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 going to be mean to me, I think. So let's go ahead and tear this off. And we'll do some accounting. So, first things first. The yellow area. I got 10 plus 14 is 24 plus 16. Well, <laughs> I don't know about you, but some would say that that's 30. Uh, plus 20 is 50. So that's 50 points for yellow. Also, I'm aware that my handwriting is that of a small child. I would do something about it if I could, but unfortunately, it is what it is. And uh, you're just going to have to live with dumpstering me about it. Um, okay. For blue, it's the number of boxes you've ticked off. So I missed two. So that's nine. So that's 37 points for blue. For green, I've... I I don't think that this is cumulative like yellow is. I think it's just as far as you get. So I'm pretty sure it's just 28 points. I, I have to imagine that that's right. I could be wrong. The rule book would probably tell me, but who's going to open a rule book? Uh, for orange, 6 plus 1 is 7, <laughs> plus 4 is 11, plus 4 is, geez, 15. Yeah, not... Not my most stellarist moment. Uh, and purple is six times one, two, three, four. So that's 24. Plus three is 27. Plus two is 29. And then my foxes, of which there are two, uh, are each worth 15 points. So that's 30 points in total for the foxes. Uh, and now, well, this is awkward because I'm recording with my phone and so I need to use my calculator. I suppose I could just try to use my big, big manly brain and do this math on the fly. Let's give it a shot. 50 plus 37, that's 87. Plus 28, that's 105, I want to say. Uh, 105 plus 15 I already don't like where this is going in terms of my score. 105 plus 15 is 120. Plus 29 is 149. Plus 30 is 179. Yeah, not, not, not great. So uh, in the parlance of the rule book, that was pretty good. Just I was just on the cusp of great result, which confusingly is one and a half stars. I don't really know what the what kind of game this rule book is uh, playing here, but uh, it's it's delightful in how uh, brutally it negs you. Um, but 
Much like anyone who's ever listened to any of my music or watched any of my videos, I get a non-committal. That's pretty good. This is, is good. You should keep doing. You should keep doing that. Just keep on doing it. Um, but yeah, man, that's Gonshan Clever. It is a delightful little game. Um, it is much better with other people than solo. Um, getting a different die to pick from from every person is a delight and keeps you interested. Um, but yeah, the game has such a delightful feel of letting you kind of just go, I get this, which gets me this, which gets me this. And uh, it's little, uh, little injections of serotonin right into the base of your skull, which frankly, these days, I think we could all use a little more of. So that's going to do it for me here in the freaking Dan dungeon or the, the dice dome or the, the wolf's den. I, I don't know. I, I got a rebrand and I, 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 I don't know. Maybe if I keep doing solo stuff, I'll make a pun about my last name. Call it like lone wolf gaming or something. It just makes me feel like I'm wearing a no fear sweatshirt. Anyway, that's been Gonchon clever in the words of the rule book. That was pretty good. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching, and if you like this sort of thing, please let me know. I'd like to do more of it. It's pretty relaxing, ultimately, and a fun thing to get to share something that I do just anyway. So, yeah. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're hanging in there. If you're watching this during the day, hope you have a great rest of your day. And if you're watching this to wind down at night, you might already be asleep, in which case, hey, wake up. Hey, Psst, wake up. Grab your brush and put a little makeup. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching. Could have hung out with anybody on the internet today, but instead you hung out with me, a sweaty, sleepy man, wearing the same clothes for X number of days in a row, playing a game where you just cross off boxes, which sometimes let you cross off other boxes. And honestly, I think that's really rad. I'll be back next week. Take care of yourself. I'll see you then. Peace.